This presentation provides an overview of Chapter 4 in the book titled Simple G, A Gridded Economic Approach to Analysis of Sustainability of the Earth's Land and Water Resources, edited by Aman Hakiki and Thomas Hurdle, and published by Springer. This chapter covers the equilibrium conditions and general assumptions for a quantitative geospatial economic model. This slide provides an overview of all chapters in the Simple G book, each of which has an accompanying presentation to motivate the material covered in that chapter. During this presentation, I'll cover Chapter 4, which describes the spatially resolved economic approach to land and water sustainability. We'll explore the critical assumptions in the Simple G framework, and we'll discuss the concept of equilibrium conditions, which are essential for understanding behavior of this multi-scale model. Previous chapters laid the groundwork by providing essential theoretical foundations for a quantitative geospatial economic model, and upcoming chapters will focus on mathematical equations, data, and applications of this framework. Sustainability is at the heart of ensuring the long-term health of our land and water resources. Achieving sustainability requires a holistic approach that considers consumption, trade, and production of food. To study this relationship, we must understand the decision-making processes that govern choices about food consumption, imports, exports, agricultural production, and input use. Our focus here is on equilibrium conditions in a multi-scale market model. These conditions are important as they're based on microeconomics and are widely used and central to the design of applied economic models of markets. This chapter describes the different markets within the model, their relevant scale, and how they're interconnected. Now let's briefly describe the different types of market equilibrium in this model. First, at the global level. We achieve equilibrium when total crop exports equal total crop imports. This balance ensures regional excess demand, or excess supply, are met in international food markets. Second, at the domestic level, equilibrium occurs when demand for local crops matches the supply to local markets. Third, within a specific local market, equilibrium is reached when demand for a specific input, such as labor, land, or water equals the supply of that input. And lastly, fourth, is the zero-profit condition which states that production revenue must equal production costs so that there is no incentive for firms to change their production levels. The equations on this slide are a general representation of market equilibrium and show that the total quantity of commodity demanded should be equal to the quantity of commodities supplied at each market scale. These conditions are ensured through adjustment in the prices faced by buyers and sellers. The next chapter will introduce specific functional forms of supply and demand for various markets. In this chapter, you'll also learn more about market linkages. It's important to understand how feeding a growing global population may affect local natural resources, following the blue arrows in this figure. Conversely, changes in resource availability can affect food security, following the orange arrows. Zooming into the grid cell level, economic and agroecological conditions shape the composition of crops at each location where there's a unique output mix. These diverse commodities, each differentiated by location, hold the key to subregional equilibrium. When we aggregate the production to the national or regional scale, Regional crop production also faces a choice. Export the produce in order to nourish distant tables, or supply the product to the domestic market where it'll feed local communities. In this chapter, you'll also learn how spillover effect can arise. When changes occur at the local level, they affect production and land use. Picture a ripple in a pond. It starts small, but extends its influence. These local shifts can ripple outward to adjacent grid cells. Now imagine neighboring patches of land responding in harmony, but it doesn't stop there, as remote grid cells within the same region will also be affected. 
Beyond regional borders, these local changes resonate globally. Other countries, distant yet connected through markets, may experience the effects of this local policy. The magnitude of these spillover effects varies depending on the scenarios, and the relative prices, market shares, and elasticities amplify or dampen the spillover effect. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, please review Chapter 4 of the Simple G book, where you'll learn about regional crop market equilibrium, local geospatial input market equilibrium, and imperfect substitution in traded commodities. Here, I've listed additional readings and references you might be interested in further exploring. On this slide, you'll find the link to the Simple G webpage where you can find additional resources as well as links to the book and other chapter presentations. Lastly, we also gratefully acknowledge support from the U.S. Department of Energy, the Department of Agriculture, and the National Science Foundation. Thank you for watching this presentation on the Simple G book, Chapter 4. We encourage you to explore the other companion videos that accompany the book on the Simple G webpage.